Welcome to our lecture online. Well, it turns out that this is such an important thing in algebra and in science in general, solving systems of linear equations, that there are eight different methods to do so. And there's probably more than eight, but eight that I can think of right now, and they're listed on the board. So what are those eight methods? Well, first of all, we can have the graphical method. In other words, we simply graph the two lines on an x-y axis, and we figure out where the two lines cross, and we find out what the x and y coordinates are of that. So that's a fairly straightforward way to do so. Or we can use the method of elimination. We have the two equations. We can either add or subtract the two equations together. In this case, if we add them, we can see that the x's will drop out, or they are eliminated. And so once you have one of the variables eliminated, it's then easy to solve for the other variable. Or we can use the method of substitution. Here we have two equations, and notice that y is defined as 3x minus 4. I can take that value for y and plug it into our second equation, so that instead of writing y, we write what y is equal to, 3x minus 4. And so that's the way in which you could solve for x and y that way. Or we can use what we call setting the equations equal. So here we have an equation where y is defined as minus 6x plus 2, and where it's defined as 3x minus 8, which means that minus 6x plus 2 must therefore equal 3x minus 8. So we set those equal to each other and solve for x, and then back to solving for y. Or we can use what we call the row echelon form. We can take the coefficients of x and y of the two equations, and we can take constants and put them into this what we call augmented matrix format. And then, through a method that we'll show you later, and again, we'll show you how to do all of those various methods with examples, but then we get it in this format where we have ones across here, and we have zero in the left bottom corner, and then we can figure out what x and y are equal to. Again, we'll show you how to do that. Or we can take the reduced echelon form. We take the same two equations, but instead, instead of stopping here, we go all the way where we have ones across and zeros over here, and then we can read off the value for x and y from that. Or we can use what we call the inverse matrix format. Hmm, Tappy's finding something. All right, so what we do is we take the matrix we get over here, we find the inverse matrix, and then from the inverse matrix, we calculate the values for x and y. And finally, we can use the determinant method. Here you can see the definition of the determinant. We use these coefficients of x and y to calculate the determinant. We then get d sub x and d sub y using a similar technique, and we'll show you how to do that. And then we simply take d sub x divided by d, and d sub y divided by d to get the values for x and y. All great methods. Now you may ask, why should we learn so many methods? Well, it turns out that in some cases, one method is easier to use than another. And so therefore, it's not a bad idea to learn the various methods, especially when we're dealing with more complicated systems. With simple systems, we may gravitate towards using these methods, and those are the ones we're going to concentrate on now. But as we get more complicated systems, it becomes easier to start using these other methods. So it's a good idea to at least have seen these methods, get better at using these methods. We'll show you more examples of these. And then you're ready to tackle any sort of system of linear equations you might encounter. And that is why we do that. Elimination is always my favorite. You like elimination the best? Yeah, I think so. I think elimination is probably the most commonly used method to solve. I would agree. I sometimes like to use setting equations yeah, equal if, yeah, if you have it set up like that. Uh, sometimes substitution is the best way to go. And again, the method you pick often depends upon what problem you're given in the first place. Sometimes one method is just more practical than another method. 